Moose Killer Cross, I just wanted to stop you guys for a second and ask about the fact that Tommy Dreamer has issued a challenge to you tonight, Moose. Are you planning to accept? Mackenzie, you look quite stunning tonight, as I do with my custom handmade Shaolin monk suit. Tommy, 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 those you still got a chant must begin to your head for making an outlandish challenge like you did. I get it. You're the hardcore legend, but the fact is, I'm a life legend, and tonight I absolutely- Hold on, hold on, Moose Moose. I, I already know what's going on here. Mr. Dreamer thinks he's in control. Do you feel in control, Thomas? I mean, you may be the innovator of violence, but you're not the arbitrator of all decisions. So I'm gonna explain to you how this works. Moose does not accept your challenge tonight because he doesn't have to. We accept your challenge tonight. Tommy Dreamer. No fear in that man. I would suggest he probably has quite a bit of brain damage. And tonight, now it's about to get worse. <laughs> How's that? Impact Lounge. Let me talk to you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans brought to you by the Impact Lounge on YouTube. This is Trent with my co-host, Kyle. What's up, Kyle? How you doing? Uh, Trent, it feels good to be back here on the Impact Lounge. You know, we got such a great response from the Impact Lounge audience, man. Uh, oh. I was surprised. Dude, uh, what a, what a welcome! I mean, I felt like they rolled out the red carpet for us. You know, it was, uh, it's tough. Beautiful. It's tough to be the new kid in school. You know, it's definitely tough to be the new guy around. Uh, you know, Roe and Adam they do a hell of a job. Uh, so I, you know, I was a little nervous about coming back to the Impact Lounge. You know, I'm an OG. I'm from the old King of the Mountain days. Uh, you know, it, it's like I'm one of BQ's kids that went off to college, partied <laughs> too hard, and had to go back home. You know, but you know, I think. Uh, we're building a nice, happy family here at the Impact Lounge. A lot of variety, all sorts of great content. The stuff BQ's doing, the Rowan Adams show, uh, they just posted another episode today. Uh, totally funny, uh, good analysis, a lot of great news. Uh, definitely check out the Rowan Adams show. It's another upload from the Impact Lounge. Uh, I like the team we're building up here, Trent. It's, it's definitely, uh, hey, we're about to take over. As far as uh, Impact Wrestling goes in the podcasting circuit, the Impact I think, you Lounge. Know, I shouted it out online, and I said, uh, "I said, you know, it's, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of what's basically known as the number one news and discussion source for Impact Wrestling. I mean, BQ, our uh, our captain over there, has really built up something awesome. So uh, I'm proud to be a part of it, man. But hey, real quick, take 30 seconds and tell the people who might not be familiar with the King of the Mountain podcast what that was all about, because Impact Lounge is like its own thing now. It's like its own monster. But, you know, it has roots to something called the King of the Mountain podcast. Tell people uh, real quick. You don't have to spend too much time on it. Just give them a little history of what that was and how you connect to that. Uh, a little history. Uh, you know, for the longtime <laughs> listeners, they probably remember the show. Because uh, I recognize some of the commenters that uh, took the time to comment on our video last week. But the King of the Mountain show was BQ's original podcast. It was the first Impact podcast that he did. Uh, I discovered it uh, very early on on YouTube because, like most of the listeners that we do the show for, I was an Impact fan watching Impact every week, but there was no podcast to listen to. The Busted Open Radio, uh, all the podcasts that I listened to at the time, none of them were talking about Impact. There was no Impact news, so I'd go to YouTube and search around. Came across this guy, BQ. He was doing a show. Uh, it was a webcam show at the time. It wasn't audio based. Uh, I dug it. I dug what he was doing. I reached out to him. I wanted to be a part of it, and uh, we did a bunch of shows. Uh, on my end, uh, I, I don't like to go back and listen to them because they're my first podcast. I think they're pretty awful in that regard. Uh, BQ did good. He did a good job, but uh, yeah, it was the King of the Mountain show. That was BQ's original show. I did a lot of that with him. Ended up getting to do uh, an interview with Ravi E, Marche Rocket. Uh, we did a couple of good things. We saw a little success. Uh, 
Got a shout out William Jackson. He was also on the show. It was BQ's original co-host before I came along. That was us three. So yeah, it was the King of the Mountain show. Uh, maybe sometime we'll get like a review going now that I'm back here on the lounge. But that was BQ's original show. And then after I left, greatest decision ever. As soon as I leave, BQ blew the place up. I guess I was uh, the one holding the channel back or something. But uh, no, uh, you know, BQ built it to something great. The Impact Lounge and... Uh, I'm proud to be part of the team. Trent, I know you're pr proud to be part of the team. Uh, BQ yeah. kills it, man, the way he's uh, engaged social media and uh, really built this channel into a powerhouse. It went from the shitty old King of the Mountain show to uh, a YouTube powerhouse as far as Impact Wrestling goes. Yeah, absolutely. I actually used to listen to some of those King of the Mountain podcasts, and you know, who who, who knew I would be uh, working with you guys? Who knew I'd be... I'd be I'd be yelling profanity at the guy, the other, the young guy on that show across the Melrose Ballroom just years later. But uh, yeah. hey, but I digress. Full circle experience. Full circle, I tell you, man. So uh, hey, listen, thanks for making us feel welcome, everybody. Loungers, can we call them loungers, Kyle? What is, what should we call the the listeners on the Impact Lounge? Loungers. I guess they are loungers. They're loungers at the Impact Lounge. What else could they be? All right, so the loungers. All right, the loungers. We got a lot of good comments from a lot of the loungers. I want to shout a couple of them out if that's all right. Um. You know, a lot of people have some nice stuff to say. You know, I mean, there was a, uh, you know, kick it off. I'm going to go down the list on some of the comments. You know, Roe the Great, you know, the the Roe said it was a good review. Roe, thank you very much. We did thank you earlier, but thank you again for that. I appreciate that. Uh, Colby Cooper had a great comment. He said, uh, Kyle and Trent versus Adam and Roe for control of the Impact Lounge at Homecoming. Make it happen, BQ. What do you, what do you, uh, what do you think? What do you, what do you think there, man? Us I, versus I, Adam I, and Roe. I might be training for that match. You know, I'm keeping that confidential. Good job. Good job. But no, Col Colby also said he's liking the new stuff we're doing. Good uh, good work. So, Colby, thank you very much. Uh, Miguel Contreras said uh, he ah. loves licking the kendo sticks. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> That's a little throwback to the Bound for Glory review. If you haven't heard that yet, check it out and uh, see what we said about licking kendo sticks. Eddie Edwards licking kendo sticks. But uh, – Take a take a look there. Uh, we want to give a shout out to uh, his little screen name is Darkest Part, and he wrote, "I like these guys; they're great." That's very nice. Thank you, thank you, Darkest Part. Adam Davy saying, uh, "Well, well done, gentlemen. Great review. Very natural chemistry. I like to think so." Kyle, I think we got some good chemistry. You know, uh, I mean, I can't stand you. That might be if you call that chemistry. That works. I mean, listen, opposites attract. Oil and water, baby. <laughs> New York and Chicago. It works. It works. Uh, uh, another listener, uh, whoopsie says, I like it. You know, I read that like, uh, I kind of read that with more, much more excitement. Like, I like it, you know, like macho man style. So thank you for that. Whoopsie. Appreciate it. Some other guys, uh, you know, they gave a lot of, a lot of commentary feedback about, um, stuff, you know, impact, general impact feedback. So, Hey, thanks everybody for engaging. Appreciate that. We had one guy didn't like it. one guy, one out of the, out of the, uh, the several, 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 Wonderful people. One guy didn't like us. Hey, we couldn't win them all, right, Kyle? I hey, guess we man, tried. That guy motivated me to do better. He's gonna yeah, how about us that? to do better. And he took the time to listen. He listened that's, to the show. That's what I said. I, I commented to him and I say, man, I appreciate you still listening. Hey, not gonna win them all, but maybe win them over with this one. Or he'll well, be pissed with this he one. He was too. upset that we didn't go directly into the review. He kind of bantered in the beginning like we always do, like we are doing right now. So Trent, that being said. Let's please this guy. I forget what his name is. It's in front of you. You could roll. What, what's his name? What, what's the name in front of you? Uh, his name is um, Miguel Miguedro. All right, Miguedro. Miguedro. For you, Miguedro, we're cutting the banter right now, and we're going to go right into the review. Take it All from right, here, Trent. Jumping in here, we are reviewing the October 18th edition of Impact Wrestling on Pop TV. This was the last Impact in the original time slot of eight uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 7 Central, and uh, this is the this is the first episode of Impact right after Bound for Glory. So I didn't get to go to this, Kyle. I had to I had to go back home. I couldn't stay for the taping of this. And uh, were you there? No, no, I was at the pay per view. I wasn't able to attend the TV tapings. I was right. there with you at the pay per view. That was it. So this, this was at home for me. This was a good old so we, home watch. Uh, same home, same thing for me. Home watch, but uh, it opened up with uh, Johnny Impact coming out. Cutting a uh, you know basically a promo about being the new champ, the way he did it, I don't think he mentioned Austin Aries by name once. I think he referred to him as the guy that used to be champion or something along those lines. And um, 
he did. I think they they did it in such a good way. They basically were like, you, you know, the way he set it up. He's like, hey, I'm not going to be a guy who cries when he doesn't get his way. I'm going to be a fighting champion, and uh, you know, just just kind of like put that to rest. And as soon as he talked about being a fighting champion, Phoenix came out, and uh, Phoenix cut a pretty decent promo. You know, Phoenix. Little background, guys. He uh, his English was like nearly non-existent about a couple of years ago, and uh, when we first started bringing him into Chicago for AW, and uh, dude, he, he, I mean, like he still got a very thick accent, but yeah, the guy, the guy got through his. I think this is like his first promo on TV in English and for Impact. I, I mean, in the in the ring, I think. So um, he came in there and he challenged uh, Johnny, first challenger for the belt, Johnny Impact and Phoenix. What do you think about that? Man, I'm excited to see it, and you know what? Phoenix is such a great performer. The oh, guy amazing. is one of the best uh, high-flying cruiserweight uh, lucha libre artists in the world. And you know what? The fact that he is able to open up the show like that, challenging the champion, you would never Huge. get to see that on WWE television. It just wouldn't happen. Like, Impact gives opportunity to the wrestlers that earn it and deserve it. They don't hold people back because of their weight class or any other reason like that. Impact provides fair opportunity, and they always keep the show refreshing as far as matchups go. And this is another clear example of that. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh... I think it's cool. I want to know what the fans, the listeners of the show here, let me let us know what you guys think about Phoenix being the first challenger for Johnny's title uh, and how they did it. I want to I want to really get some feedback on this one because um I'm curious. I mean, so it, I, I didn't see it coming. I don't read spoilers, so I didn't see it coming. And I wasn't expecting Phoenix to be the first guy to challenge, but uh, but that's cool. So, yeah, let us know what you think about that. I'm curious what people, you know, who do people want to see first? You know, does it does it being Phoenix make it too obvious? He doesn't have a chance at winning. You know what? What's the deal? Yeah, if not yeah. Phoenix, who would you have liked to see uh, challenge Johnny Impact instead? Yeah, so let's let's hear that. So anyway, we go from that. Uh, they set it up for next week, and uh, we go from that back to Mackenzie Mitchell who was looking looking radiant, and uh, she's interviewing D- Tommy Dreamer after he uh, came to Eddie Edwards' aid against Moose and Killer Cross. And basically, Dreamer says he's coming after Moose because of the uh, the post Mac attack on Edwards, and later on, um, later on that night, you know, time time is going to be in action. No, hold on a second, there, Trent. Don't just move along there. I need to mention this. Uh, that promo, that's a Tommy Dreamer that I haven't seen in a long time. That is a Tommy. That is ECW Tommy Dreamer, and the wink he put at the end of it about uh, you know. He's never been politically correct, and he's damn proud of it. That That's face he made, shirt. the yeah. eyes, that is old school Tommy Dreamer. That's actually, that little tagline is a, uh, that was an ECW t-shirt that I own. And it says, it's got ECW logo in the front, and the caption on the back is Poli- politically incorrect and proud of it. And damn so, proud of it. Damn proud of it. So that's, uh, that's an ECW t-shirt. But, um... But yeah, man. So that hey, listen, Tommy Dreamer is consummate. He, he this guy is is constantly. You want you want if you want like you want that comfort zone feeling of a guy who you've been watching for twenty years, and he's exactly the same guy you can count on. That's Tommy Dreamer. He is, and I mean, New York is his city. So when you come to New York, you expect a guy like Tommy Dreamer. And I gotta be honest with you, Trent. Uh, our buddy. Uh, Big Boss BQ, the CEO of the Impact Lounge, uh, he caught a little heat with me because he wasn't very impressed with Tommy Dreamer coming back around, period. Uh, at Bound for Glory, I believe uh, one of you know the things that I disagreed with with BQ was that he doesn't want to see Tommy Dreamer. He just, you know... He said that there's nothing in 2018 that Tommy Dreamer can do for me. And I have to disagree with that, Trent, because, man, Tommy Dreamer, to me, is the ultimate veteran. He is the ultimate grizzled veteran. And when I watch a wrestling show, now, this is my cup of tea, you know, Mm -hmm. this is my preference personally. BQ is entitled to his opinion and what he likes to watch. That's what, you know, makes wrestling good. There's something for everybody. 
But me personally, I need a good veteran on my roster. I need it. And the position that Tommy Dreamer's in right now in Impact Wrestling is parallel to the position Terry Funk was in in ECW back in the day. Would you agree with me, Trent? Totally agree. He's not he's not as old as Terry was during that run, but he's 55, I believe, in yeah, 95. Not yeah. too old. Yeah, not, yeah, so Terry was a little older, but still Tommy fits that role perfectly to a T. 100%. I agree with you. I think he's uh he's become that elder statesman who's there to kind of be that be that uh the role model for the young guys. I mean, everybody loves Tommy. He's he's another one of those guys that when he goes into a Hall of Fame someday, which he will, he's nobody's, nobody's going to have a bad thing to say about him. I mean, he he's one of those guys where like everybody respects Tommy Dreamer and he loves and, the business and he does it for the business. Oh, the guy loves it. The guy, I, I mean, I've I've been a big fan of his. I actually ran into him at a, I ran into him at a White Sox game once. He was freezing his uh, freezing his nuts off because he didn't bring a jacket to an <laughs> April baseball game. And uh, yeah, real, real, real quick sidebar. I think people will find this interesting. I was uh, I was at a White Sox game in Chicago. I'm a Sox fan, not a Cub fan. And uh, I was you know scrolling through Twitter during a during an inning change. And I see Tommy Dreamer, he posts at the White Sox game. He was wearing his Dreamer, uh, I forgot what number he was had, but it was a custom White Sox jersey. And I go, holy shit. So I just took a, ch- a chance and I just I sent him a direct message. I go, hey, man, where are you sitting? And he actually messages me back and he goes, on the E. And I go, what, on the E? What the fuck is he talking about? So me and my buddy are like, what does he mean, the E? And we're looking around like, where, where is there a big E somewhere? And then we go, oh, front row on top of the dugout. Where it says White Sox, he's he's on the E of White Sox, <laughs> so I'm like, no shit. That's our look. I go, I think that's him. So we go all the way down, and we go down there. He's freezing his his nuts off because he didn't bring a jacket, and uh, he, he's. I'm like, hey, Tommy Dreamer, what's up, man? He goes, hey, how's it going, buddy? So we just start talking uh, and shooting the shit. And he was in town for a show that was in Milwaukee the next day, and and uh, we go up. He's, he goes, hey, let's go, let's go get something, and you know, he goes. Let's go. Let's go up and uh, get something to drink. I say, all right, cool. We walk up with him to the concourse and shooting the shit a little more. And he goes, "You guys want to take a picture or something?" I go, "Yeah, fuck it, let's take a picture." So I got a picture with Tommy Dreamer at a Sox game while he's wearing no jacket, freezing his nuts off. <laughs> but, Hell of a uh, story. Hell of a story there, Trent. Nice guy. Nice guy. I didn't buy him a beer or anything. You didn't buy him a hot dog. Nah, nah. He's got money. Tommy Dreamer's got money. I might, <laughs> might buy him a. He should be buying me a hot dog. <laughs> You know how much money I paid to watch this guy wrestle? Yeah, man, <laughs> he might be able to help you out some of that 8x10 dough. Yeah, give me an 8x10. What the hell? Oh, no. <laughs> he just carries them with him. Yeah, why not? <laughs> but, uh, no, all right, so anyway, Tommy Dreamer, good stuff. So then uh, Mackenzie, she, she's quick. She goes right from backstage, and she goes right outside so to a to a pre-tape. It was a pre-tape. It was a pre-tape. Let's not, let's not make it look like somebody edited badly here. But um, she catches uh, Moose and Killer Cross outside. And, uh, the, you know, looking cool. Moose, had, Moose is looking like Raiden on the streets of Queens. I mean, it, Kyle, you're a New York guy. You, you know, dressing like Raiden walking around Queens. I mean, I guess in New York, nobody really looks twice. What, what yeah, I mean, it's New York <laughs> City, so you can't surprise anybody in New York City. It's impossible to stand out. Uh, however, Moose, I'm loving the fashion sense. I love this new Moose, man. Money Moose. Uh, the guy's got style. I want to know where he's getting these outfits. You know, I want to look like that. Now, I think n- nothing is going to top the dashiki with the head piece from uh, Bound for Glory's main event, but th- th- I like the monk suit. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the monk suit was cool. I, I'm telling you, I think the, the heel turn was the best thing to happen to Moose. He, he, he gained so many more dimensions to the Moose character after that turn, and it was the best thing to happen to him. But uh, Moose declines Tommy's offer, and uh, he he tells he says you know what Cross will face you instead. So Moose is taking this uh th- this role on like hey I'm I'm too good to get my hands dirty anymore. Cross well, Cross well, will do my second. dirty work. I thought like Cross said uh, I thought Cross said um you know that I thought Cross insisted that he was going to fight. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Cross, Cross is the one that declined on the be- on behalf of Moose and said he'll take him on instead. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. But uh but yeah he's doing you know Cross is the one getting his hands dirty. So listen I love I love Killer Cross. So seeing him uh 
in action is great. The look in his eyes, man. Killer Cross is on another level. I, oh, I can't. I can't. Next level. The dude's intense. But uh, all right, so from there, knockouts action, Kyle. Knockouts action. Taya Valkyrie taking on Katarina. Wera Loca, as she likes to call herself. What uh, before we get into the, the results here? What do you think about Katarina right now? I think she's a little lost on the character. What, what happened to the uh, the love triangle? What do we where do we go from here, man? Well, you know, this is the un, uh, unfortunate spot that some wrestlers fall into uh, at the end of a storyline. Uh, I guess the Joe Hendry and Grado thing is over for her, and uh, she's just in between here. Uh, clearly, uh, this this was about Taya. This was not about Katarina. This was all about Taya, and uh, fortunately, she was on the receiving end of some of that Taya Valkyrie kick-ass. Yeah, it was it was a quick match. She hit the road to Valhalla to get the win. That's a pretty that's a pretty uh badass finisher. I mean, that's like one of those finishers where if the the person receiving it is not quick about moving their face to the right or left, dude, that's that, that's a broken nose instant. No, it's so, brutal, brutal finish. That's a brutal finish. No, it was uh, it was quite. I feel bad. That I feel like the Katarina Joe Hendry thing should have stretched on a little longer. I think they had something there. It could have been a really a lot more twisted if they just kept going with it. Yeah, I'm really not sure what they're going to do with them next. I don't know, man. It's kind of limbo-ish, and I don't, I don't know where they're going to take it. But uh, Well, I actually don't think they were in New York. I don't think Joe Hendry was in New York, and I, Grado might have been in New York, but Joe Hendry definitely wasn't in New York. Because I saw he was uh, he was actually working in a show somewhere, different state somewhere, um, the night of Bound for Glory. So I know he wasn't part of the Impact tapings. Now... The way they are producing television, they could still add him into the show. Uh, you know, with some off off location footage, if you will. Uh, but yeah, no, I think um, the way they're creating the program, um, balancing out the roster, you're gonna see some people work a set of tapings and then probably go away for a set of tapings and then come back the following set of tapings. And, you know, rotate yeah. like that. Uh, like, for example, um, I don't know if we're going to see too... I could be wrong, but I don't know if we're going to see too much KM and Fala during the New York set of tapings. I know they were there. I mean, they were on site, so I hope, I hope we... Well, they got a match next week. They got a tag match next week. I know that. Okay. So, it's it's KM and Fala taking on Cross and Moose. So, that's okay. uh, uh, AKA suicide mission. But, hey, we'll get to that next week. But... Uh, so after Taya picks up the win, uh, McKenzie gets in there and does one of those ringside interviews, which uh, it's weird. So they do it for some people. They do it for they don't do it for everybody. So you kind of know when they're doing a ringside post match, it's uh, it's for good reason. Like they're really they're really trying to further something immediately while it's fresh in your mind. And I think um, so. You know, she just basically was calling out Tessa again and telling her she doesn't respect her. So I think. I think now you're getting – you're building a feud because now you're going to have a second match. They're already telling you that there's going to be another match here. So I think uh, I think it's inevitable. I mean, they had a good match at, at Bound for Glory. What do you think? Ah, uh, You're right, Trent. Absolutely. The, the, the feud is not over. I want to know what the fans the, – the listeners here think about should Taya be getting another match or should they have gone with somebody else? I mean, you know, Kira Hogan's back there. I know Allie's in the middle of a couple of things, but, you know, I mean, could they have gone with Allie? Could they have gone back to Sue? Uh, you know, I mean, there's 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 some other ladies back there. So, I mean, so should Taya, should they immediately have jumped back into Taya getting a match? I mean, I'm wondering kind of what, why does she deserve another match? She lost at Bound for Glory. So does she get another match or should they? So, yeah, I mean, let, let's hear from the listeners here. What do you guys think? Should they have gone elsewhere or does, or, or is there beef in the Taya story here? Is there? Something more to, to get. Let us know. Drop your two cents in the comments here, right here on YouTube. But people, please, please, don't just listen. If you Engage. made it this far, you're at this point in the podcast, play along. Have fun with us. We're going to write back. We'll read your answers next week on the show. Please, interact yeah. with us. We want to know how you feel. When we ask the question, uh, you're taking the time to listen. You're here right now. Just, Just, you know. Interact with us, please. We're begging you. We're begging for attention, aren't we, Trent? I mean, we, we, we can't be begging two shows in, man. Come on. 
I mean, we're looking we're looking love a little us. desperate back in two love shows. Us. In love us love like us, you please. love Rowan Adam, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. I mean, we're the new guys. We need we need a little validation. And that's what we're looking for. Validation. That's right. But uh yeah, so anyway, look, we go from that to uh Seidel and Ethan Page. You know, Seidel's going on about the third eye and, and Ethan Page is kinda sarcastic semi sarcastically agreeing with him and and telling him, Hey, you know, I, I suffer even though we lost, I suffer less pain than before you opened my third eye. So I don't know where it's going. He, he seemed, uh, you it think seemed Ethan like, Page has his own agenda here? I think so. I think that's what that, I'm thinking that's what they were alluding to. Ethan Page kind of looked like he was smart-assing Seidel. So I don't know where it's going. I don't know. It's kind of a, it, it was kind of quick to start messing with these two already. You know, I don't know. So we'll see. I was really hoping, though, when uh, – so I don't know if you caught this, where Josh was talking about uh, Seidel's mask. And then, uh, and then Callis was like, you know, busting his chops about, you know, the third eye, this and that. I was really hoping they weren't trying to bury in the past how Josh is the one who essentially did that to Seidel. Do you remember like the the higher power thing that Josh was for Seidel for like two weeks? Yeah, it was weird. They toyed around with that and then just whoosh, swiped it. it away and pretended it didn't happen. I was really hoping that uh, that Callis would have taken a, you know, one of those cheap shots he likes to do at Josh and, and said, yeah, it's all your fault that he's like this, you know, <laughs> like something like that, but nothing of the sort. So and then trying to kind of bury that because that, that went nowhere, absolutely nowhere when they did it. It was kind of a dud, fell on very deaf ears. But uh, so anyway, yeah, we go right from that to two of my guys, two of my favorite guys, Chacha, Chacha Gama. Come and yells at Rohit Raju, his his nephew Rohit. And Rohit's kind of not the nephew here is getting uh, getting upset. He's getting a little frustrated at getting yelled at every week. And he's like, "What am what am I doing wrong now? You know what the hell's wrong with you?" And then Chacha yells at him in the language, which I understood. And he basically told him, "You're an idiot. You know, you're an idiot. You don't listen to me. You're a loser. And because you don't listen to me, that's why you're unsuccessful." I, he really is a Chacha, dude. That's a, that's what a, a Chacha will do to you. He'll treat you like your dad does. So that's what Gama's doing. But here's the thing, Kyle. Gama Singh challenged Rohit Raju next week. Gama Singh, great Gama Singh, is going to wrestle again. What do you think about this? Not what I was expecting. You know, usually he you know beats him upside the head, sets up a challenge for him. But of all things he could be challenging of Mr. Rohit Raju, I was not expecting an encounter against Gama Singh Cha Cha himself. Gama Singh is, I believe, like in his early seventies. I want to say I'm 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 gonna look this up right now while we're talking here. But Gama Singh is uh oh, so he's sixty three. I'm sorry, my apology. Sixty three. Hey, listen, sixty three is the new fifty three. I mean, come on, he's not too bad then. He's pretty spry for an old guy. But uh. The great Gama Singh, man, he was a uh, he was a badass back in his day, back in the uh, in the Calgary territory, which I know that's a big um, he's a big uh, you know uh, Don Callis is a big fan of his, so I think I, I got a feeling Gama can throw it down. So we'll see what happens next week. Cha cha, but but cha cha. Ro- Ro- he was was pretty frustrated. He was like, "What the hell? I got to fight you now?" You know, I was like, "I feel your pain." If my chacha came to me and wanted to beat my ass, I'd, I'd feel the same way. I wouldn't want to fight that crazy bastard. He's beating him yeah. over the head every episode. The brooms and all that. and just, <laughs> It's great. It's great. But uh, I'm I'm actually really looking forward to that match. I really want to see Gamma Singh in the ring. But uh, The hashtag cool, brown boy pride. Brown boy pride. Listen, it, it, it's for us. There's not too many of us on TV, man. I mean, we got we got these two. We got uh, a couple guys. Well, we got one guy on uh, on the other program. That's about it. We're kind of limited, man. Apu you know, on the Simpsons. Yeah, I got Apu on the Simpsons, and then that, we got the stereotype. You know, I mean, geez, they, you see the controversy they made about that guy. And we got what's his name? Uh, what's that? What's that guy's name? Uh, Aziz Ansari. It's about it, man. We're we're limited on entertainment. I got to take what I can get. South Asia's got to take what it can get here. But uh, so anyway, we'll see what happens next week. But anyway, moving on from that. Ethan Page, accompanied by Matt Seidel, taking on Trevor Lee. Now, they alluded to Trevor Lee being on this losing streak. 
And uh, I kind of wasn't paying attention that he was on his losing streak until they mentioned it. And uh, what do you think they're going with this? What do, what do you think about this? I, I'm not really sure where they're going with Trevor Lee being on a losing streak. No idea. No clue. You think it's a good idea to have him on a losing streak, though? I mean, like, they were pushing him so damn hard, and all of a sudden now he's he's kind of a, you know, he's kind of a scrub all of a sudden, losing to everybody. Well, he's going to reach his breaking point, and then hopefully uh, – we see a different Trevor Lee. I'm I'm really not too sure. I feel like he can use a, a, a refreshing, you know, some, something to, to divvy it up a little bit. I mean, there's no Caleb Connolly on these tapings. I'm wondering what's up with that. Maybe he's kind of lone wolf in it a little bit. Maybe they'll, they'll re, redo his gimmick a little bit. We'll see. But, Trevor's uh, one of the most uh, talented people on the roster, so hopefully they can find something for him to do. But, uh I need a, a reboot on the X Division. I need more spotlight on the X Division. I, I need more oomph in the X Division. And Trevor Lee, to me, has got to be one of the main guys that is going to carry that division moving forward. So hopefully they can find something for Trevor Lee. And in my opinion, if you're going to rebuild the X Division, uh, Trevor Lee's got to be on top of that list. I think uh, one of the biggest critiques going on right now that I've been seeing pretty consistently, mine included, is is the X Division needs more emphasis. And it's been for a bit, man. I think they're just like, – like you talked about last week. I mean, uh, what, what is it with the with all the regimes that they can't get the X Division right? What's going on, man? I, I don't – like Cage is great, but I mean, like what the hell? Like he didn't have a singles match at Bound for Glory. You know, he, he's not – it's not like a featured – it's not like – it should be treated bigger than it is, I think. I don't know. And they have some of the best cruiserweight X Division style wrestlers in the world right now on their roster. Yeah, and I think I think we're doing it a disservice, man. We're really selling it short. Uh, and just not having a match on Bound for Glory really kind of – really kind of showed that, that it wasn't – it's not a priority right now. I don't know. But maybe. You got Phoenix, Rich Swan, uh, the Christ brothers especially come to mind, Trevor Lee. Uh, I can go on. You have right in front of you the best high flyers in the globe, in my opinion, right now. And you're not putting any emphasis on the X Division, and that's a crime. They need to do something. Has to happen I ASAP. I think um... – I think this they're 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 hinting towards Sammy and Cage, obviously. And obviously I think this is this is your X Division match. Sammy carrying that title could be interesting. I'm I'm I, I would like to see that. Sammy eventually my I called it uh a, a little bit ago that Sammy is a future world champ for impact. I think he just signed on for two more years. You have a lot of room to build Sammy Callahan into a major player. I mean, he's already become a major player for Impact. But what I love about the guy, Kyle, he takes pride in being an Impact. I love that about the guy. He's very proud to be on that roster. And he's and I don't know if you heard that interview he did where he's like, I want to be known as the guy who fixes Impact Wrestling. I want to be that guy. I want to be the I want to be the guy who takes it to the next level. You know, I read that headline last week and caught the audio snippet. Uh, makes me proud to be a Sammy Callahan fan. Uh, let's face it, Sammy Callahan is, in my opinion, the top heel, uh, not just at Impact, but across the professional wrestling landscape. Uh, really, nobody's doing the work that Sammy Callahan is doing. Uh, he's a raw, straight-from-the-gutter character. The way he carries himself, everything he does, and the Chris Brothers, too, give them their props. The o OVE, Ohio is for Killers, the Chris Brothers, they're fantastic. Uh, but Sammy Callahan, he's a guy that you're going to remember, and I love that. He said people are going to look back and think, oh, AJ Styles, guys like that, they built TNA. But guys like Sammy Callahan came and saved it at the end, and that's, that's tremendous. That's what I want to see, man, so... Hey, listen, we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, uh, Paige takes out Trevor Lee, takes him with a modified Uranagi, takes the victory. Quick match. Trevor continues a losing streak. I'm curious where they go, man. We'll see. Uh, then they go right to the back, and they go to the uh, the new tag team. Well, I guess they're not really a tag team, but Rich Swan and Willie Mack. And uh, talking about Swan getting his X title shot against uh, Brian Cage that night. So we'll see that later in the match. But... Um, Willie Mack, you know, I, you could tell he's a little nervous. 
but uh, but he looks like he's happy to be there. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, dude. His match at Bound for Glory was fantastic. We talked about this already, but that dude impressed me at Lucha Lucha versus Impact, and then uh, Bound for Glory. So I'm excited for for Willie Mack, man. He just he just, he just won the um the NWA US or national title yesterday, or uh, you know at that NWA 70 pay per view or whatever that was. So you Willie Mack's on I a little streak. Put- I would put Willie Mack and Rich Swan together as a permanent tag team. I think they look good together. Uh, they work good together. They have great chemistry together out there. Uh, I think Swan and Willie Mack could uh, definitely, definitely do great things together as a tag team. Yeah, curious to see where they go with with if they if they aren't doing a tag. Curious to see where they go. Uh, you know, with them otherwise. Well, yeah, congratulations anyway. to Willie Mack. Uh, yeah, he did win. Uh, uh, what did he win last night? I didn't watch the show on uh, Billy Corgan and Dave Lagana, ex-TNA writer. Uh, they're running the NWA now, and Willie Mack won, I believe it was the North American title. Is that a North America or the National Heavyweight title or something? It's, oh, it's basically a U.S. title. So, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, man, so then we go from that to uh, – we go backstage, Kira talking to Allie, you know, Kira's and Allie's really overly perky, almost like uh, she wasn't just possessed for like a second at Bound for Glory. But, uh, you know, she's like, hey, are you all right? And you're, the last time I saw you, you were kind of kind of fucked up, you know, and she's like, no, I'm fine. I'm happy bunny. And, but her hair is black. I don't know if you caught that. She dyed her hair black or it turned black. So Allie's like, there's a turn going on here. She's changing. But, uh, she's evolving. She's evolving. Moving to the dark but, side. Yeah. So uh, she asked, you know, Kira, are you going to be with me at my, my match? She goes, yeah, of course, against Alicia, Alicia Edwards. So she said, yeah, I'll be there. So shoot over from there to uh, Scarlett Bordeaux and Petey Williams. Petey thinks he's got it in the bag. Petey's a great little actor. I don't know if you, I don't know if you watched Petey back in the day on his Vine and stuff. Petey Williams is a great comedic actor. And uh, he's great in these little skits, and he was hilarious here. He thought he had it in the bag with Scarlett, and she gives him a little flirt, and she tells him, uh, it's not just for wrestlers, Petey. It's open to everybody, and uh, you maybe want to send in a tryout video. Have you seen any of these tryout videos, Kyle? Have you oh, seen what's going on out there? Tremendous. I've been retweeting them on our uh, We Talk Impact Twitter page. Uh, check some of them out on there. Uh, every time I find a good one, I retweet it. Tremendous. And uh, I don't know if you caught it. Uh, Don Callis said he's putting his own video together. I heard him say that on the Impact episode. Yeah, right. he did say that. So, uh, well, Don Callis, we'll see. What, I'd be curious to see what he would do on on one of those. But there's some there's some really interesting stuff going on out there. And Don Callis has been pretty busy. Uh, did you see he attacked Kenny Omega in Winnipeg? Oh, dude, I thought that was pretty cool. He, right in front of Kenny's parents. Mom and dad are in the audience, too. Took him out, man. Now, does this was... set up an angle for the Jericho Cruz that's going to lead backs into Impact Wrestling? You know, man, I said, uh, I, what I what I texted a buddy of mine, I said, that's an Impact appearance that's inevitable now. I think Kenny Omega is going to show up in Impact. I think, I think this so. could build the bridge between Ring of Honor and Impact, number one. And number two, definitely give us Kenny Omega in Impact Wrestling. I think... I think this is a step in that direction. I think it starts at the Jericho Cruise, and we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, man, it's uh, we'll see where we'll see what happens. I think the the Jericho Cruise, which is next Saturday, departs uh, Nassau next or departs Florida next Saturday from Miami, going to going to the Bahamas, and uh, we'll see what happens on that, man. Yeah, I am so jealous of. Anybody going on that cruise, I, I there's no way I could afford it. I did not have the money to go. If you are going, let us know about the trip. Uh, you know, stay in touch. Uh, DM us. Leave us comments, whatever. If you are going on the trip, uh, give us the deets. Give us the scoop. We want to hear all about the trip. Show us your pictures, souvenirs, all that. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to throw it out there for anybody listening that's going on the trip. If you want to be uh... – do a little correspondence on the impact related results of the matches. Let us know. I'd love to hear uh I'd love to hear what what our impact boys do on that on that cruise. We'll so, have yeah. you on the show. We'll have you on the show giving us your uh trip experience. This is the people show here, Trent. It's the people show. This is all people. We were pe- we were just regular people two weeks ago and look at us now. 
We're on the Impact Lounge. Look at us. Big time, baby. We hit that big time, Kyle. Big time Impact Lounge stars. You know, when, uh, when uh, BQ sent over those contracts and we uh, we looked them over and we saw the all the zeros on that contract and all those decimal points on that contract and we, you know, we, we enjoyed that celebratory cigar, Kyle, and we, we said we finally made it to the big time, baby. Oh, yeah. Look at us now. We were just a couple of schmoes. Back in the day, talking about impact and twiddling our thumbs, hoping that Killer Cross retweeted us. And now, look at us now, Kyle. We are big stars on the Impact Lounge. We are, we are not, we're, we're top talent, as Don Callis likes to say. Top talent. You're damn right, Trent. Now move along here with the review. All right, geez, all right. Sorry, a little Snap bit of a tangent. It. Snap back, Trent. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm really gonna piss off the loungers here, man. I think they're gonna be like this guy. This guy's middle name should be Tangent. But uh, this, guy, this guy's got one show deep on the Impact Lounge, and look how he's acting. He can't ego. handle it. Uh, they got, I got an ego on me. I'm wearing my ego like a like a like a cheap cologne. You, you and Ethan Page should be a tag team. All ego. That's right. Hey, hey, no, no kidding. I should. Uh, all right, all right, we go from there. Killer Cross, accompanied by a Raiden. I mean Moose, taking on Tommy Dreamer. This was actually a pretty good match, man. Kyle, I don't know if you did you pay attention. Tommy Dreamer. Wrestled a damn good match against Killer Cross. This was and my favorite match on the show. Uh, the storytelling. It was really about the storytelling, man. Uh, the selling, man. The way Tommy. Uh, this is just another thing, man. Uh, Killer Cross, amazing. Tommy Dreamer, amazing. Both amazing at what they do. Uh, it's the, the way Tommy Dreamer is, sells those blows, man. And, uh, dude, it's just. It was great. You saw, you saw Killer Cross beating on the old dog, and uh, man, the crowd pops for it every time. It's classic Tommy Dreamer. Every time Tommy Dreamer has that comeback, crowd goes crazy for it. But this, this was all Killer Cross. Unfortunately for Tommy, that was all Killer Cross, man. He, he beat the shit out of him. Uh, he hit that Doomsday Saito, and he won the match by by ref stoppage. Tommy was out, man. Go back and watch that last Doomsday Saito, the last one. Uh, The one that, you know, stopped the match. Now, Tommy Dreamer, masterful artist of the craft, one of the best professional wrestlers of all time. However, I could have got worked here, man. I probably did. If I did get worked, uh, you know, it just just goes to show you how great Tommy and uh, Killer Cross are together out there in the ring. But, man... I could have sworn Tommy's skull bounced against that mat like a basketball. And it was ironic because earlier in the show, he's talking about concussions in his promo. Looks like he got a concussion right here. Go back, folks. Watch that last Doomsday Saito that Killer Cross hits on Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer's head dribbles against the mat like a goddamn basketball. Shit, man. I'm now... Now I want to go watch it back. I mean, I, I remember. He gets just, his bell rung, dude. He gets his bell rung. He might have been legit out, man. But yeah, he, she choked him out, dude. He was, he uh, that ref that ref stopped it, and that was the end of it, man. Tommy had no chance. Killer Cross is just an intense son of a bitch. Dude, that guy's Killer always Cross on eleven. Doesn't belong in wrestling. Why is he a wrestler? If I were Killer Cross, I wouldn't be putting my body to wrestling. Fuck the love of the game. Fuck sportsmanship. Fuck the sport of kings. Fuck wrestling. Killer Cross should be an actor. This guy should be winning Oscars. The, the, the way he's, he's got that look in his eyes, the way he speaks, the way he presents himself, it's crazy because he, I'll be honest with you, Trent. I wasn't sold on Killer Cross at the very beginning. Uh, when he first came in and he did the promo, where he's like, oh, call the police. Like, I was a little funny about him, but I had heard about him through you. What you were saying about him... Uh, how you heard through Disco on all the podcasts that Disco Inferno does, the great Glenn Gilberti. Oh, what, what does Vince Russo call him incorrectly? The Glenn, Glenn Gil- the great Gil- Glenn Gilbernetti. 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 The great Glenn Gilbernetti. Uh, he was putting him over, and that's where you heard of the guy because, uh, you know, nothing against the Cro- Killer Cross, but before Impact, I don't think he had much of a name. Uh, he just well known in certain independent territories. However, uh, when he first came around, I wasn't sold on him. I wasn't too sure about him. And it took a few episodes. And every week, Killer Cross just shines a little brighter. And 
just gets himself over a little more. It's just this crazy talent, man. He's so great. Every time Killer Cross is cutting a promo or wrestling, you just you can't get your eyes off the guy, man. He's he gets lost in the performance, and the guy's on another level. Yeah, he. Uh, I remember he was I think doing stuff for either CML, CMLL or AAA, and and uh, Disco was talking to me. And Disco partly trained him, and he, he was. Or something, or had some some work with him, and he was like, "Man, this guy, this is the guy. You have to watch this guy." And I was telling AEW, I was telling the uh, AEW manager, I go, "Dude, you got to get this guy before somebody else does." Because I don't think he's ever been in Chicago, so I'm like, "We need to get this guy over here, man." But then I saw him show up on Impact. But I, but uh, on the contrary to you, Kyle, when I when I saw him do that first look to the camera, when he goes, uh, "I guess you better call the cops," dude, I was hooked right there, man. I think to me. The way he delivered that that first impression line, that was uh, that's not, that was something different. The, something about him just stuck out to me immediately. So I don't know. I, I took it differently. He won me over right away. Either way, Killer Cross, one of the best in the business today, definitely. Hands down, hands down. So, uh, but yeah, man. So you know, they they choke out Dreamer pretty bad, but he's done. So they. They kick it up to a lighter note. They go to Abyss's uh, some clips from Abyss's Hall of Fame uh, ceremony, which I did, which was on Twitch on Saturday, as well. I was kind of just streaming it. I had threw on the Twitch channel. I was cleaning the house, and I threw on Impact Twitch, and I just kind of let it roll. And they had one of the one night only extravaganzas on there. And then they went into the Hall of Fame, dude. It was great the second time around too. Good, awesome to watch it on TV after being there live. But. Uh, Abyss classic, classic induction speech. You know he's he's the man. Everybody loves him. It was cool to cool to see uh, see that speech again. But yeah, dude, we go from that talking about Abyss, then we go right into Eli Drake. Oh, sorry, Eli Drake, and he's talking about how he was sent through a table by Abyss. He's taking legal action against Impact because of it. Because an unsafe working environment, you know, he had a little Parker come out of the chair. He's got a bis sitting with tables. He's pissed off. He's suing Impact. What do you think? Does he have a case? Kyle, you used to be a lawyer. Does he have a case? Did you just say I used to be a lawyer? Let's, let's just roll with, roll with it, Kyle. Roll with the show. That's what we're doing here. We have to... Uh, I used to be a lawyer. That's right, we, yes. Uh, <laughs> at, the, uh, at the tender age of 24 years old, I used to be a lawyer. Uh, Hot shot attorney, Kyle. Yeah, uh, like Lugie Hauser or something like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Eli Drake. I'm always down for an Eli Drake promo. Doesn't matter what he's talking about. Doesn't matter what the subject is. But if Eli Drake's on my TV, I'm watching. If Eli Drake's talking, I'm listening. Uh, Eli Drake is suing Impact Wrestling. Uh, kind of funny, the circumstances. Uh, <laughs> out of nowhere, I mean, this is what he's been doing his entire career. But he's, he's taking legal action now. Uh, I think he's really suing because he's humiliated that... He thought he was wrestling Chris Jericho and James Ellsworth came out at Bound for Glory. I think that's what he's upset about personally. Uh, but no, Eli Drake is suing Impact Wrestling. Now, I kind of pulling this one out of nowhere, but it works for me because I know it's going to be hilarious. I know it's going to make Eli Drake shine. The, it's just the perfect type of storyline to put Eli Drake in. Uh, I'm sure Joseph Park is coming out of this because there's... Uh, a lawsuit involved. If you're in Impact Wrestling and, you know, you bring up a lawsuit, uh, all types of legalities, uh, Joseph Park, you've summoned Joseph Park. So hopefully this storyline is summoning Joseph Park within the next few episodes. Yeah, that's funny. I, I, I didn't even connect two and two. That'd be hilarious that where he goes to sue Impact, it's Joseph Park and he goes, God damn it, dummy, aren't you, aren't you abyss? You know, something like that. And that'd be fun. All right. So we go from that. We take it over to the LAX celebrating. They're in the back, partying it up, drinking like fish, like fish, drinking away. They, they're they're throwing it's down about every day hmm? of the week, baby. Booze, booze, seven, booze. Seven days a week. It's like taking vitamins. That's it was. Right. Uh, I was watching a TV show. They saw an old. They were, they were talking. This old man was talking. He goes, uh, he goes, yeah, one a day. He, he goes, you're drinking beer once a day. He goes, yeah, for my heart. He goes, oh, okay. I guess it's like vitamins. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, so yeah, man, they're partying. King walks in. 
right into the lion's den. And uh, King walks in. He, he, he's he's beat up. He looks like he's been through through you know hell, which he has. We saw that. And um, they say basically the bosses have allowed the OGs to have a part of New York as long as they control different areas. Conan accepts. LAX continues to celebrate. Do you think the the feud is over? What do you think? I want to know what the listeners think too. Do you guys think the feud is over? Is this the end? Does LAX move on? Kyle, engage me. Used to be a used to be a cop working the gang division in uh, in in Queens. Does this does this mean that that this is over? Well, for <laughs> the time being, you know, I think that the OGs they respect the big bosses. You know, the big bosses those are the guys that will cut off your cojones if you know what i mean so yeah for the time being um there's peace in the streets yo there's peace in the streets if you know what i'm saying you know so where where does where does lax go from here that's a hell of a question Trent. where does lax go from here uh i mean they're still they still have the titles lax is holding the belts and if they hold them this week, they hold on to them. They're going to the Jericho Cruz as tag team champions. So that's next that's next Saturday. That's after the next episode of Impact. Do they bring the belts? Do they bring it? They put them on the line against the Bucks? What do we do? I mean, there's, there's some interesting possibilities here. Do you think they bring the belts out on the Jericho Cruz against the Young Bucks? Oh, they better, man. I, I don't want none of that bullshit where we see the Ring of Honor titles and not the Impact Wrestling titles. They're going on the Jericho Cruise. They are representing Impact Wrestling, the almighty Impact Wrestling, and they are going to be showing off their Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Championships. Now, are they going to put them on the line against the Bucks? Are we going to see a, a winner-takes-all situation? Because I don't know who the Ring of Honor uh, World Tag Team Champions are. But I have a feeling that it's the Young Bucks. Who else would it be? Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking that uh, we're going to see the Young Bucks versus LAX. I think maybe uh, maybe at the time of the show, day of the event, they'll raise the stakes due to whatever the circumstances are. Might not be the case. However, after the cruise, when they come back, who is up next for LAX? I mean, I'm not a psychic, Trent. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I'm thinking of the Impact's current landscape of tag teams. Personally, I'd like to see KM and Fala step up for a tag title shot. I don't think Big there's anything time. wrong with that. Are you against that, listeners? There's another one for you. You know, listeners, by the end of this, just just leave a whole essay or comment as you go along. Every time we ask you something, comment. You can, you can comment more than once. Hang out. Sh you're, part sh of, yeah. you're partying with us. You're hanging out. At, We're lounging together, point. damn it. Yeah, we are at this point. We're we're, we're, gonna, we're asking the listeners to basically do their own video at this point. I mean, That's what the, the hell? Part of it. This is the people's podcast. This is people's all of our podcast. podcast. That that's true. That's true. Kyle, in your former life as a politician, I mean, you know, you know how to please the people. So that's right. I I, tr I trust you. All right, so cool, man. Let's uh, we'll see. Hey, yeah, let us know what you guys think about that. So anyway, let's let's continue on the review. Let's go. We got we still got a couple more matches going on here. Now, hold right? on, I, I, I just want to ask that question one time. One time. Time, if ahead. you could pick any tag team, doesn't have to be on Impact's roster right now, could be anybody, uh, as long as they're not locked under a contract anywhere else. You could have Impact bring in any tag team to go up against LAX for the Impact World Tag Team Championships. Who would it be? Let us know in the comments. What yeah. tag team would you have come face LAX? Ooh, that's a good, good, engaging question. Very good, engaging question. Let's see what you guys think. All right, from that, Allie with Kira Hogan taking on Alicia Edwards. Quick match. Allie is uh, is oddly brutal in this. I mean, she still comes out to the Happy Bunny music. Black hair now. But uh, she attacks... Uh, she attacks, you know, Alicia right from the get-go, hits her with the, uh, the code breaker, picks up the win. And then after the match, she starts choking the shit out of Alicia, and she's and she's she's like beating her, man. I mean, Allie's like lost her mind. Alicia, Alicia didn't do anything to her. She took took a nice beating. That's about it. But uh, uh, Kira jumps in there, gets her to stop. You know, begging her, she's like, stop, stop. What are you doing? And then Allie just snaps out of it. No idea what she did. She's kind of like, well, what's going on? It, it it reminded me a little bit of a. Uh, 
Bob Backlund in 94 when he came back used to do this thing where he'd snap and he'd put people on the chicken wing and they'd pull him off and he'd kind of look at his hands and be like, well, what happened? Like, what did I do? You know, like no idea what he did. Kind of reminds me of Allie right now. You know, a little, little darker though. Allie's, Allie's been to hell and back, literally. So uh, we'll see where that goes. I'm, I'm really, I'm engaged on this. What do you think? Allie toyed around in the undead realm. And, unfortunately, I think she's possessed, man. She's got a spirit inside of her. She's got that demonic possession inside of her taking over her. You're watching her struggle with it. In the match, you see that evil take over, Allie. And it's insane to me that Impact Wrestling has... Of all the good stuff they've done in the past year or two, all the great stories they've told, you really have to focus on Allie because I love the way they rolled out her character very, very, very slowly and just every little detail. I love how they brought her in, didn't know how to wrestle, Maria's assistant, Slowly but surely built her up through all these feuds, everything she's been through. You watched her progress. You watched her learn. Uh, Braxton taught her how to wrestle. All the relationships and things she's been through. Up until this point, Allie has this whole other just... The storytelling is... It's nothing that I've seen on a wrestling show before. It rivals uh, certain television shows. Uh... The way Allie has this storyline that involves these recurring characters, now there's an undead realm. The stuff between her and Rosemary, uh, it's crazy because you're seeing Allie turn evil now. The demonic possession is taking over Allie, and it's almost like we're going to see, and this is fucking crazy, think about this, Trent. We're going to see Allie possibly turn into the evil demon, and... Rosemary is going to be the baby face going against Allie, which it, it could go this way. where Because Rosemary, remember, was the one that always warned Allie about the darkness. Rosemary always warned Allie about the darkness. You could see Rosemary, even though she's the demon, even she is the demon, it's Rosemary. She could be the one going against Allie where it turns Rosemary into the good force and Allie the evil force, but that's just me fantasy booking down the line. Um, you got to think immediately, uh, Kira Hogan's probably going to be on the wrong side of Allie pretty soon. I mean, what else is going to happen? You know, I don't know, man. That's a, that's a good that's a good scenario you laid out. I, uh, I could see it. I could see it. I mean, Rosemary warned her, you know, you, you shouldn't be here. You know, bad things can happen. Dude, I, I think it's 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 a nice long-term storyline, which is what I like long ones I can get invested in. So, But there's so many different angles to this whole thing because it's not just Allie's thing. You got Sue Young. You have, well, now Madison Rain is gone. Uh, Rosemary, the way they're all involved in this and there's like subplots because Rosemary and Sue Young still have a feud. Rosemary and Sue Young still have a very, very uh, heated feud. There's just, there's so many different angles to this. Uh, and it's, dude, it's just Impact Wrestling pulling off the best storytelling overall in professional wrestling right now. And Absolutely. it sounds like we're just sucking up to Impact and kissing their asses right now. But their hard work is paying off. They're doing great things. Now, X Division, not so much. We have our complaints and our gripes about the X Division, but I look at the storytelling within this Alley storyline, and it's not just an Alley storyline, it's a Sue Young storyline, it's a Rosemary storyline, it's a Kira Hogan storyline, and then you look at the LAX and OG stuff, and it's just nobody is writing better stories and telling better stories in the ring, through the promos, through the wrestling, than Impact Wrestling. Yeah, I guess you're right, man. I, uh, I think... Um... I think I think I think right now is the best time to be a part of it, dude. So to be to kind of be following along on the on their stories. So man, I'm 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 psyched to see where they go with it. Speaking of that, we got a we got a promo for a new knockout coming through, man. A new knockout debuting very soon to impact. Jordan Grace coming to impact wrestling. What do you think about that? I don't know much about her, but she looks uh 
Not, I'm not, I don't mean this in a bad way. I mean this in a good way. She looks uh, a little bigger than most of the knockouts. So I think she's going to be uh, booked a little more dominantly. Uh, randomly shot in the dark. Uh, give me a, give me a random scenario what you would do with her on the roster. Uh, new knockout coming in, Jordan Grace. Listeners, let me know in the comments. Where do you see her on the card? What do you think they're going to do with her? Um, Trent, you want to hear what I think, what I think they should do with her? Yeah, tell me. I'm, I'm asking you. I'm um, asking you. I think that Scarlett Bordeaux needs a diesel right now. I oh. think, she needs, I think okay. Scarlett Bordeaux needs somebody to do her dirty work right now. She needs her insurance policy, whatever you want to call it. And uh, Jordan Grace, I look at her and just that's a perfect pairing right there. That's what I want to see. Ooh, that, now that. I like that. It makes I like sense where you're because going it, protects Scar it, it, it protects Scarlett but still allows her to – Go up against Tessa for the Knockouts Championship. You could do a lot. Uh, so it might be a little hokey to some people, but that's up to Impact to execute it properly and not make it so predictable. But that that seems to be a, a very good possible direction for her. But let's see. That's just a dream scenario. Let's see what they do with Jordan Grace. Uh, seems like a hell of a talent. Let's see what she does in Impact Wrestling. Uh, hopefully she makes the most of the opportunity and uh, she's somebody we're talking about for a long time. Well, now here, here's what I'm, I'm going to throw this out there to everybody. I personally, I've seen her live a bunch. She, you know, she, she's in this area a lot. And uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Jordan Grace. Now, I've only seen her independent show. It's all right at All In. And uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Jordan Grace. I saw her when she was real young in her career. AEW brought her in, I believe, when I was just a fan. I've never been a huge fan, but here's what I'm wondering. I want to know... If with that impact polish, that TV polish, and that TV presentation, what she can do, I want to see how she comes off. And may, you know, like it's happened before, man. When there's been people I wasn't a huge fan of independently, but when I saw them with that impact polish on them, they came off great, and I became a fan. So hey, let's it's see. Been what, a few years, so hopefully, hopefully, she can prove you wrong. I, we'll see. We'll see. I'm like I said, I've never been a big fan. A lot of people around around my area here like her a lot, but uh, I like to get her, uh, the listeners' opinion on that one. Let me know. Am I wrong? What am I missing? Tell me what I'm missing about Jordan Grace. I've seen her a bunch, uh, so I'm wondering what am I missing about her. But anyway, if you're a I, fan of Jordan Grace, please fill us in. Let us know uh, some yeah. of the highlights, maybe some things we need to see, matches, whatever. Let us know. Yeah. All right. So here we are. Main event time. Main event. Rich Swan versus Brian Cage. Rich Swan, who I feel is a perfect X Division guy, taking on the the X Division champion, the Wolverine himself, Brian Cage. Dude, this was a great match. I don't you think about it, but this was a pretty badass match, man. I think that uh, these two had great chemistry. You could tell they've worked together. They knew each other well. They read each other really well in the ring, and. Uh, they had a lot of good high spots, up and downs, false finishes. And in the end, uh, Cage hit the Weapon X to retain. But, man, you know, I I personally thought uh, Swan had a shot, man. What do you think? I did. Uh, Rich Swan, like you said, uh, somebody that definitely should be a leader of the X Division. Uh, super talent. But Brian Cage, also a super talent. Uh, I thought Rich Swan had a chance. I did. Like, you know, he has the, of all people, he would be a guy that has the potential, but I think Brian Cage, uh, there's no stopping Brian Cage anytime soon. I, I just don't see it. Uh, he's just going to keep crushing and keep crushing and keep crushing. However, however, Sammy Callahan pinned Brian Cage at Bound for Glory. Sammy Callahan hits the ring, gets in Brian Cage's face. Points over at the screen where we see the footage of Sammy Callahan hitting that brutal cactus driver in 97, planting Brian Cage right on his head, hitting the one, two, three, and then the Crist brothers hit the ring. Well, if you, did you notice that they, she showed the pinfall from Bomber Glory on repeat? It was like a, it was like a, a, a boomerang. They kept showing it back and forth, man. It was pretty funny. He kept showing it to him. And he, he kept his eye contact with Brian Cage, and he kept pointed to the screen basically like look at it i've pinned you look Jay, at it Jay again chris goes for that dive uh comes up short 
OVE drag him, drags him back home, back at the ramp, you know. Uh, Brian Cage versus Sammy Callahan, Trent. You, you like that match on paper? 100%. I'm ready for it. I, I, I want it. I want Sammy to, to go forth with that X Division title. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Sammy Callahan. I think he's perfect. I think this match is perfect. It, it, they can give, give him a good 15-minute minimum. Minimum. And let him just go at it. Let him work. Let him put this together and go at it. I think this could be a badass main event anywhere. I'm thinking so, in my head that uh, Sammy Callahan does become the new X Division champion, but it doesn't help that you have Jake and Dave Christ because I mean, not for nothing, Sammy Callahan is is super dominant, is a force to be reckoned with. However. He's got his two boys with him. You know what they do. You know their hijinks. You know what they're up to. Uh, you could get the belt off of Brian Cage through Jake and Dave Christ. Uh, so Brian Cage, does, you're still protecting Brian Cage, but you're still putting the belt on the Sammy Callahan. True. We'll see where that goes, man. I'm, I'm excited. But that was that was it. That's the October 18th edition of Impact on Pop. And uh, next week... Remember, uh, new start time, 10 Eastern, 9, 9 Impact Central. Impact After Dark is what they're calling it. Uh, you know, I like it. You know, everyone was really pissed off about this time change. I love that they're branding it as something. They could have just taken it on the chin, like, hey, you know, Impact's moving. I like they're calling Impact After Dark because it's kind of making me think if they're going to be able to push the, um, the TV censorship envelope a little bit. And I'm wondering if they can do that a little bit. Maybe they can push the envelope. So we'll see, man. I would run with it. If I were Impact, why not? Why not? Why Why should we be afraid to promote an edgier wrestling product? Let the Absolutely. people know. Impact doesn't have deals with uh, children's toy companies. They, they don't have to go through the channels that places like WWE does. They can push that envelope. Let's put that to our advantage a little bit you know i'm saying more and more impact feels like a modern day ecw when i hear don Callis on commentary i see sinister minister out there i read in the reports did you know that joel gertner was hanging out at this set of tapings i did not know that no there's chilling, a huh? tommy dreamer in there the spirit of ecw that ghost that dead spirit of ecw is alive within the current carnation of impact wrestling that's awesome. It, yeah, people have been saying it's got that feel to it, man. It That's great. It does. And people don't want to because they think of TNA. And they got this negative, false, you know, narrative on TNA. So they don't want to They don't want to admit that. But I, if I could think of one company that uh, what ECW would look like today, it's just Impact in its current format. And, and that that's the biggest compliment you could give Impact Wrestling. Absolutely, I agree with you, man. So, but what, I, well, real quick, Trent, before we move along here, I gotta know uh, what was your highlight of this episode. I'll tell you mine, and then we'll ask the listeners. All right. Well, for me, I uh, I really liked the um, the main event a lot. I'm a big fan of the main event. I think I think that was a really good a really good match, and I I liked I liked both those guys a lot. And I think they uh, they showed a good feature of the X Division right there. And that was cool. So I'm a big fan of that. What about you? Um, Not for, like, you know, it wasn't the most uh, high impact, high energy match of the night. But I'm not always looking for that. Uh, my, my highlight of the show was Killer Cross versus Tommy Dreamer. Um, I think Killer Cross really shined. Really showed you that crazy sick psychopath that he is, and uh, I think Tommy Dreamer put on the hell of a performance himself as the grizzled veteran in the story. Uh, me personally, uh, Killer Cross versus Tommy Dreamer—that's my highlight of the show. Now, more importantly, who cares what I think? Who cares what you think, Trent? I want to know what these listeners think. Uh, if you're listening right now, you still got—you're still with us after all that. You made it this far. That's going to be a recurring thing here on the show, you know. They made it this far, Trent. Let us know. Interact with us. What was your favorite part of this week's episode of Impact Wrestling? Let us know in the comments, folks. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're, we're opening we're opening the door here. We're opening the, the door for people to to let us know, man. So come on in and tell us, loungers. But that's the uh, October 18th edition of Impact on Pop, Kyle. Can we take a break, Trent? I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, there you go. Okay, break time.
Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans, now on the Impact Lounge. We'll be right back, folks. In Slamtown, things kick off a little later. Some would say closer to the witching hour. OVE move until 10 p.m. OVE move until 10 p.m. Hell, we don't even wake up till about 6 p.m. We don't get started till the sun goes down. Hey, yo, on these streets, anything can pop off after 10. Everything good happens after 10 p.m. Global Wrestling Network is the premier destination for the best wrestling from around the world. Watch new episodes of Impact, Explosion, and exclusive digital content online or on your phone all for free. Upgrade to the premium subscription and get ad-free access to the extensive library of current and past weekly Impact episodes, greatest matches, classic pay-per-views, and original series with more content added each month. Get Global Wrestling Network now on iOS, Android, or at GlobalWrestlingNetwork.com. Yo, right now you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah. And we're back, everybody. Welcome back to Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans, now on the Impact Lounge. Kyle. The top five. I'm going to give you a countdown like Casey Kasem, everybody. The top five. The top five. Every week, I'm going to do a top five list. Uh, it's always going to be something about Impact Wrestling. Uh, maybe once in a while, something will be a little more general towards, you know, all wrestling, but... For the most part, I'm going to do a random top five list pertaining to Impact Wrestling. And since, you know, we're fresh off the heels of Bound for Glory, uh, seeing the show live, uh, this week's top five is going to be my top five rules of attending wrestling shows. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. Being a guy who works in the independent wrestling uh, forum, I'd like to hear this. Number five. My number five rule for attending wrestling shows live, pick up your trash. At the end of wrestling shows, one thing that always grinds my fucking gears, Trent, is when everybody's leaving and they leave their drinks, they leave their plates, the mustard and ketchup on them from the hot dogs, the, the pretzels, the half-eaten chip bags. It's wow. disrespectful. How are you going to disrespect the place? You buy something, you're going to eat the food. Throw it out on your way out. No reason for it. Put it in your pockets or something. I don't know. I don't care what you do. Eat the wrappers if you have to. I don't care. Don't fucking leave your garbage all over the place. Respect the venue. Respect the wrestling promotion. Respect the wrestlers. People got to clean up after the show. Show a little respect. Dis it, disastrous. I, I've seen venues. I had to pay my dues and clean some of these venues You know, when I first started out here. And uh, disastrous, absolutely disastrous what I've seen some venues look like after a show. And that's, not, that's not even touching the bathrooms. I'm, that, that's just talking about, you know, <laughs> the, the, the seats. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. I'm not even thinking about the bathroom. I'm talking about the seats. Yeah. So my number four rule of attending wrestling shows live, Trent, don't be cheap. Now, if you're broke and you don't have the money, that's okay. I'm not I'm not kicking your ass if you don't have the money. That's fine. You were able to attend the show. That's good enough. That's great. However, if you do have the money, don't be stingy. Don't be a cheap ass. Chances are the wrestler you're coming to see isn't getting paid that much money for their appearance. If it's an independent show at a bingo hall or a gymnasium somewhere, don't be cheap. You got a few extra bucks? Buy a t-shirt. Buy an 8x10. Support yeah. the wrestlers. Support. This business dies if you don't support it, people. Keep putting money into wrestling. Now, like I said, if you're broke, you don't have the money, that's fine. But if you do have the extra cash to throw around, show a little support. Buy a t-shirt. All right. Yeah, I agree. These guys got bills. All right. What else? And my number three rule for attending wrestling shows live, 
Respect the people behind you. Now, you might be a little confused there, Trent. What do I mean by that? Okay, well, when you're attending a show live, especially during a crazy match that happens all over the arena, you tend to stand up at certain parts. It's almost like going to church. Everybody in unison, you stand up, you sit down, you stand up, you sit down. Now, sometimes in these moments, and this this all goes back to the LAX and OG's match because there were chants of, sit down, sit down, coming from the back. So you stand up, sit down. Don't stand up and block people's view. If you, if, first off, I don't think anybody should be standing up during the match, but if the whole crowd's doing it, you follow along, you follow protocol, you follow the routine, th- that's fine. Go along with it. Stand up, stand down. But don't stand the whole show. And if you bring a sign with you, make sure you're not blocking the people's view in the back. Not everybody can get to the front. It is what it is. So be mindful to the people behind you. All right. Very good. These are very good rules. Everybody take note. Damn it, Kyle. This needs to, this needs to be sound bitten onto its own. And my number two rule of attending the wrestling show, Trent, have good hygiene. Use deodorant. You ever go to a show on a hot summer Jeez. day, there's no air condition, especially sometimes at the indie shows where the seats are taped together and you can't move the seats apart. That happens a lot. Please. Wait, 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 wait. Is that a thing? That's you a to... thing. That's I've a never thing. seen that. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, it's hysterical. Uh, you know, without burying any companies uh, out here on Long Island, uh, one of the independent shows that I attend very often uh pretty tough to see them over the summer because the seats are so close together they're all taped like they had the way they have their rows set up the foldable chairs are taped together so i'm sitting next to a 400 pound guy he's got the sleeves cut off got those pits pretty close to my head guy's not wearing any deodorant i'm ready to die there's no reason to be there as much as i'm enjoying the wrestling please wrestling fans use good hygiene shower use your deodorant do not come to an indie show stinking we do not need that Preach, brother. God damn it. Let that be known. And I have smelled I have smelled death at wrestling shows. But wait, wait, I, I gotta go back to something before you get to your number one here, man. Who the hell tapes seats together? Why do you tape seats together? What kind of rinky dink bullshit is that? You tape seats together. Very, very uncomfortable. And maybe oh. it turns into a free-for-all where people start grabbing chairs and moving them around. I don't know. I don't know what the point of it is, but very, very inconvenient and uncomfortable. Extremely. Not a fan. I'm not a fan of that. I I, I, I I disrespectfully disagree. I'm not a fan. Not a fan. And Go my ahead. number one, Trent, the top number one rule of attending wrestling shows live. Don't right. be a comedian. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, God. keep going. Elaborate. If you yes. want to be a stand-up comedian or something like that, you, you want to make people laugh, you want to get into comedy – that's fine, but professional wrestling shows live, that's not the place you should be doing it. Now, when I attend shows, man, people pay their ticket. They could do whatever they want. That's fine. You're going to chant. You're going to boo, whatever. Yeah, I personally get annoyed when people show up and, uh, you know, boo all the boo all the baby faces and then cheer all the heels. That stuff annoys me, but it's whatever. You paid your ticket. However, there is nothing worse than... Then the wrestling show comedian. The guy sitting there, he you don't even know what he's doing there. He paid his ticket to sit there the entire show just to shout these things, to try to make everybody else laugh. Very annoying. It's like the class clown that wasn't funny. You can't stand him. Um, the funny signs. That That's one thing that really gets me. Uh, they're funny sometimes, but like there was that one guy at Bound for Glory, uh, the guy, the, the the Asian dude with the yellow shirt, he's wearing a TurboGrafx shirt. Strange. The guy in the front row, uh, throughout Bound for Glory, he had a sign that said, like, bring back Paula Abdul. Bring back yeah. Screech. It's like, come on, man. If you want to get into comedy, go pursue comedy. Don't show up to a wrestling show to bother all of us. Nobody needs that. Uh, a side note, I loved TurboGrafx-16, man. I was a huge fan of TurboGrafx. I don't know about you, but uh, you might be there, a little Trevor. young. We're not, we're not going there. We're weird enough. We're not going there. All right, all right. Sorry, sorry. All right. There. All right. Beautiful. All right. So, all right. You take note, everybody. God damn it. That, those are some great points, Kyle. Great points. comedian. Trent, oh. I, I know you deal with it at AAW. You see these fans that show up, 
and they just want to get themselves over and be like, they want to be part of the show, but not yeah. in a good way. You you would think shitty Louis C.K.'s in the audience. You know what I'm saying? Like shitty versions of, of comedians. I, I agree with you. I cannot shake this shit sometimes. Everybody wants to be the guy who gets the first dig in like, hey, you know, I'm going to reference this guy's former gimmick. And I'm gonna oh I'm gonna talk about something about personal about this guy that I read on the dirt sheets. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. That's the best when somebody shows up and like they they joke about whatever they did in WWE ten years ago, like whatever oh. the character's name was. Like, great, you watched WWE ten years ago. Good for you. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, so that's good. my Take- top five rules of attending the wrestling show live. Uh, that's my top five this week. So number five, pick up your trash. Number four, don't be cheap. Number three, respect the people behind you. Number two, have good hygiene. And number one, don't be a comedian. Thank you, Absolutely. loungers, hanging out, hanging out this long, making it to the very end. If you listen to the entire podcast, you get to the very end. You're very special. We appreciate you. Thank we you. really appreciate you. So look for us. At, you can Now, again, we mentioned we are now featured on the Impact Lounge, but we also have our own feeds available at Total Nonstop Impact on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio. Look for us there. Rate, review, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Get us, get all the feeds you can. Get us on all of them. Connect with us on social media on Total Nonstop Impact, found at We Talk Impact on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just type in We Talk Impact, it comes right up. You'll find us on all of us. Connect with us, let us know what you think about stuff. Engage, talk to us. Leave comments on this video. Tell us what you think. I, I think we held them long enough, Trent. Uh, you gave them the social media. What more, what more can we ask for these people? Well, all we can ask is listen to us again next week. Let us know how we did. Thank you, everybody, to, for listening to Toll Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans. We'll see you next now week. Now on the Impact Lounge.